coming into this game. The Timbers are on fire. They've won six of their last seven, and they have been charging up the Western Conference standings. As a result, RSL's loss yesterday is good news for Portland. They can widen that gap. Why does that matter? Well, top four guaranteed a home game at least in the first round of the Western Conference playoffs. On the other side for Miami, their third straight loss Wednesday in Atlanta. They flew direct from Atlanta to Portland, and they are buried right now. Eight points below the line. The line is 40. Montreal, D.C., and New York City all tied for those last three playoff spots. Miami eight points below the line with eight games to go. And Phil Neville, their coach, telling us yesterday this really is last chance saloon this game and then next weekend against the Red Bulls. And it's a lovely day, mid-60s in Portland in this first weekend of October underway as it is the Portland Timbers wearing green. It is Inter-Miami wearing white. Still, those two are battling. Still to be able to keep it, though. Spree making the run from Jimmy Charles. Going to get there. Spree got a touch from Shea. And it bounces just wide out for a corner. Well, speaking of Dane Breck and Shea, what an intervention here at the back. We saw him getting up into the attack early into the game on that left-hand side. The recognition and seeing the run from Esprit at coming. Great timing on the pass. Great timing of the run and great timing on the tackle here from Breck Shea at the end. Recognizing Esprit was trying to take this shot early. Where you miss a guy like Blanco or Valeri in these types of spots where you have some possession. Blanco clipping that up. Moore is going to get to that one. Moore's been forced into a save. That was like in slow motion. That yeah. ball hung in the air. No one came to it in a white shirt. Yeah, it came down with snow on it. That ball from Bravo. It hung up there so long and really no pressure on the ball here. Pizarro just standing off. Miami settled back deep defensively, but it was a nice run for Moore. He started inside and actually the flight of the ball took him outside the penalty box. And this Loria into the middle. Jimmy Char made the turn on McCoon cutting it in. Felipe Moore. How about Van Rankin? Will anybody shoot? Foshiva. Closed down. Aspria picks it up. Aspria through traffic puts it wide. Well, there you go. That's the type of quick acceleration and turning on just a change of pace. And it comes from Jimmy Char playing in that number uh, 10 position. When the ball gets wide, look at this turn here. How he just commits to it. Once it finally comes to Loria, Jimmy Chara comes alive in there and just spins McCoon has time and space to pick up his head, and you're right, they just couldn't work that half angle, get the ball out to get the shot off. Good cover there from Figal on the first one, and then it's Espria coming back. Doesn't need to make that run into the space. Gregory crossing, Breck Shea's gonna get there at the end. Shea cutting it back, Iguain, first look of the day, saved by Clark, rebound not fully dealt with, and now Van Rankin is gonna get there only as far as Gregory. Ball just kinda hooks it in behind. Breck Shea does a good job of just settling in that moment and allowing the runners to come to life on the second ball. He found Iguain who hit it through traffic. Here's Gregory, he just kind of picks his head up and says, okay, I'm gonna deliver this one in. Nobody in the box, but it finds Shea, and this is a good strike from Iguain. Got up. Now for Foshive. Find the backdoor option, Jimmy Chara, cutting it in, Moore's there, it was knocked down by Lidon, and he sweeps it away in behind for a corner. Yeah, this is a great move off the ball from Jimmy Chara once again. It's no coincidence that their best chances have come through him. He just catches Gregory sleeping here. He thinks he's tight with him as soon as he looks the other way. Char sneaks him behind. It's a great pick out to find Bora and an even better defensive play from Kelvin Leardam. We talked about him getting up to speed. Ronza, Federico Iguain to replace Robinson and Pizarro. As Blanco hooks that in, Marsman battling the sun, elected to play it safe and punched. It keeps it alive for Jimmy Char. Driving into the byline, cuts it in. Mora! Knocked down super inch has that stayed out and you've been talking a lot about the sun John and I think it really does affect Marsman here on this cross because it felt like the way that it was hit in from Blanco he's just gonna go up and catch it but he just punches it away All right, we're stopping. We're and stopping. it does look like there's an offside on Zuperich but not directly involved there at the back of that play and Marsman just doesn't do a great job Chara picks it up finds Mora I'm thinking that's in the back of the net. It's blocked once and then twice coming from behind. It's Gonzalez Perez to poke that one away. As I thought Zuperitz was just going to poke that one home. 1-0 one Portland. Great play. Marco will swing this in. It's knocked down. It bounces in. It's a goal. It's Nia's goal.
Corey, talk about a super sub. The guy's just on the field. His very first touch of the game is off of a corner. And we said that Blanco would play quickly. It wasn't a super fast corner, but Miami not back set defensively. And Nia Skoda just floats in right around the six-yard box and pokes it home. Completely uncontested. All the Miami defenders look at each other saying, who's picking up? That man right there, sometimes you don't know your marks. He blasted forward. Is there time enough for Inter-Miami to get this ball upfield? 